The PlayStation 5 Pro is here, ladies and gentlemen, and the internet has opinions on it. Oh, do they ever have opinions. And as you can see right there, a $700 price tag available November 7th. Vertical stand sold separately. Hey, guys, $700, but uh, that's, uh, that vertical stand sold separately. So we, we want to make sure you understand that you're not getting that vertical stand. Uh, absolutely insane. So, of course, how do you think this whole thing has gone over? Not well. The reveal trailer right here over on PlayStation's official YouTube channel, 143,000 downvotes to only 49,000 upvotes being ratioed to hell. What do you think the comment section looks like? $700 is crazy. $700, no disk drive, no stand. Incredible. The list goes on and on. People are like, what the hell are we doing, Sony? You have the technical presentation, uh, and that didn't go over well at all. So here, 116,000 downvotes to 87,000 upvotes. So None of this is going over very well at all. Um, $700 with no vertical stand and disk drive is insane. Yes, it has no disk drive in it, which this is the future of video games, unfortunately. Then you had Jack's Films with this video right here that he put over on Twitter, and it's really good. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. Uh... Oh... Uh, I... I have good eyes. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be looking at here. Uh, oh, yeah, the banner. No. Shoot, what am I looking at here? The <laughs> building on the right has more windows? No. Uh, are there more polygons? And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene. Okay, now they're just fucking with me. What Am I supposed to look at the trees oh you know what the leaves look sharp oh no that's the original ps5 what am i looking at here i love how he put the oh, that's original ps5 yeah because it listen as i said on a live stream earlier console gamers don't care about these things console gamers don't give a shit about distant you know things that you can barely see that are, are far off and don't have any impact on anything you know who cares about that the gamers that have the rigs that can handle it and they're totally satisfied Gamers don't care about these things, generally speaking. They just don't. This stuff's not important. It's absolutely laughable that PlayStation made this such a big part of it. Uh, I saw this meme right here, uh, PS5 to PS5 Pro, 100% accurate. But look, with all things considered, the PS5 has done really, really well. And I think a lot of people aren't aware of how well the PS5 is doing. PlayStation 4... Um, as a matter of fact, I got the charts right here. So, okay, so the PlayStation 2 is the highest selling console of all time at 158 million units sold. The Nintendo DS is second at 154. Then you have the Nintendo Switch at third with 142. The Game Boy at 118. And the PlayStation 4 at 117. If you go down here, you have the PlayStation 5 has 60 million units sold. It's going to pass the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, probably on their next update. Then next in line will be the 3DS, then the Game Boy Advance, and then it moves into the top 10 when it passes the PlayStation Portable at 82 uh, million. The PlayStation 5 right now is currently at the same pace that the PlayStation 4 was. So the PlayStation 5 is going to move 100 million units minimum for sure. All right, that's going to happen. So we just need to put that context out there that the PlayStation 5 is doing well. And I don't know how this is going to go over ultimately with the PlayStation 5 and the fact that there's no disk drive. I think that's turning a lot of people off. Gaming Bolt has a little breakdown right here. So we're going to watch this. Sony has officially revealed the PS5 Pro, ending months of leaks and speculations with an underwhelming nine-minute presentation that saw lead system architect Mark Cerny trying his best to make the console sound much, much more enticing of an upgrade than it actually is. A larger GPU, faster rendering, a greater focus on ray tracing, better and more consistent frame rates, and entirely new proprietary super sampling technology in PSSR, on paper, the PS5 Pro sounds like a remarkable step forward, but it has failed to make a good first impression. I very which in turn much failed for that. Much, much worse by the fact that the console is ridiculously priced. When the PS5 Pro launches on November 7th, Sony will sell it for a price of 
a price that you'd be shocked at if Sony hadn't consistently spent the entire PS5 generation making the worst possible pricing decisions. <laughs> the base PS5 itself is still an arguably overpriced console, a fact that's exacerbated by the many price increases Sony has implemented for the console itself and its accessories in different regions, and often multiple times like in Japan. Not to mention, switching to $70 games, having significantly higher PlayStation Plus subscription prices, selling the PSVR 2 for a higher price than the console that it launched as an accessory for, or what have you. But even though the ridiculous pricing for the PS5 Pro is depressingly on brand for modern day PlayStation, it's still hard not to be shocked at the audacity of it. Yeah, but I mean, again, as I said, with the PlayStation 5, with all the pricing, it's still it's still pacing the PlayStation 4. It's still going to hit over 100 million units sold. So they kind of have that arrogance in them to do this, and I can understand why. I'm clearly not a Sony guy at all, although I do prefer playing on my PlayStation over my Xbox. But uh, when it comes down to it, I'm a Nintendo guy. Um, you know, I enjoy playing on my PlayStation for sure, for sure, but I don't like Sony. Sony can go to hell. Uh, but I'm just trying to look at it from that perspective. Like, they've gotten away with it with the PS5 up to this point. I, I don't know if Sony fanboys are going to buy this. I'm certainly not going to buy this damn system uh, anytime soon anyway. I mean, the only thing that it attractive to me is the memory. Um, but I can just get memory for my PlayStation 5. So, what's, I don't, so there's really nothing that would make me want to buy this system. Let's start with the fact for a great many people. The PS5 Pro is already hugely unnecessary to begin with. Close to four years into the PS5's life cycle, we're only just barely getting started with this console generation. Cross-gen releases ruled the roost for what seemed like an eternity, and it's only now that we're starting to see developers making games specifically for current-gen hardware on a more widespread basis. That's a good point, um, for sure. It, is, it does feel that we're not really into this, this whole cycle with the PS5 and Xbox um, because of of that, what he just said, so that's a really interesting point. We're past the halfway point into this console generation, and the PS5 is still struggling to justify its own high price. To introduce a console that's supposedly a more powerful version of the hardware that is only just beginning to come into its own doesn't seem like a great idea to begin with. You have no idea. You are glorious prey, worthy of craven. Let me tell you how this is all gonna go down. But when that mid-gen console refresh is being sold for $700, at that point, to say the very least, it becomes crucial for Sony to have a real- What's the real difference here? Like, I really, like, what- $700? At that point, to say the very least, it becomes crucial for Sony to have a really convincing first showing for the console. I mean, it's slightly smoother, I guess, but the, it's, it's really hard to tell, and it's only when it's side by side. Console. It becomes crucial for Sony to have a really convincing first showing for the console. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I don't know, man. I, I just don't see how this is. Uh, this does not seem like this is going to go over well. But I go back to the PlayStation Five overall and the fact that it sells at where it sells at, and they've had the problems they had, and it's still pacing at the same pace as the PlayStation Four. And I so I see based on the data that we have, I see no evidence to to think that the PlayStation Five is going to slow down with the PlayStation Five Pro. I, I see no evidence of that because ultimately, if I'm paying whatever what, whatever it is five hundred dollars for the PlayStation Five, and then I have to buy external memory and all the other bullshit, um, it's hard to swallow that pill when it's right there as seven hundred dollars. But when you start adding all the other bullshit to it, you're not that far off base. And what do you have? Two terabytes of, of storage in the PS Five Pro already. Um, so I mean, I guess. I guess it, it's not that big of a leap, but when you smack that $700 right there, that's where it's a wake-up call for people. Will they support it? I don't know. The overall reaction has not been great, so I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out. But you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for checking out this video, and we will talk to you later.